Today we're gonna to compare the Sony a7 IV with the Sony a6600, bit of a battle between full frame and APS-C. So let's just jump right into it. So I really want to know what the differences are, what the similarities are, and also how well the Sony a6600 will compete against the a7 IV. I also want to help you guys out if you're not sure whether you're going to buy the a6600 or the a7 IV, or whether you're just wondering if you should buy full frame or an APS-C size camera. I shot these two cameras side by side on a shoot with my girlfriend Maria, so I'll be rolling some photo and video examples as we talk about both of these cameras. I haven't had a ton of time with the a7 IV yet. It literally just arrived in the mail. Whereas with the a6600, it has been my main camera for well over one year now. I shot both cameras at a full frame equivalent of 24 millimeter. It's gonna be interesting to see how much more bokeh the a7 IV gets because a full frame camera gets more light, AKA more bokeh. <laughs> So both cameras have got really great autofocus. They both have eye and face autofocus and also subject tracking. They're both really, really snappy autofocus systems. But I did notice a difference between the a7 IV and the a6600 with the a7 IV having slightly better autofocus system. It is a newer autofocus system after all. The a7 IV definitely has a lot more buttons and custom dials, where the a6600 is definitely more of a user-friendly option. The a7 IV definitely has more dynamic range than the a6600 being a full-frame camera, but that's not really gonna matter if you nail your exposure. You're never gonna notice the difference between a full-frame and APS-C if you nail your exposure right on camera. There's no major difference in color, but it definitely is there. The Sony a7 IV definitely fixed the Sony issue where they get a little bit of a purple fringe on edges sometimes. I use the same preset on both the a7 IV and a6600 and personally I can't really notice a difference. What about you guys? Hit me up in the comments if you can see the difference between the a7 IV and the a6600 in terms of colors. So in terms of what I like and dislike about each camera, I really like on the a7 IV how you get 10-bit color profile so you can use S-Log free. Having a flip screen, all cameras should have a flip screen, period. I don't care what you say, but having a tilting screen is super annoying in most circumstances. The ability to go from photo to video very easily, and also your video settings just being saved, and then when you move into photo, you don't carry over things like what shutter speed you're using, or picture 
profiles because that can get super annoying when switching between photo and video. And finally, it is a full frame camera and it has more megapixels. I think that's a very small bonus and it doesn't really matter, but it's nice to have. The one complaint I do have about the a7 IV is the 4K60. I really didn't think it was going to be an issue, but after shooting off the camera, it is like pretty super annoying. So what I really like about the a6600, it is a great photo and video camera. You really get the best of both worlds in this little beast and it has a cheaper body compared to the a7 IV and also smaller and cheaper lenses compared to full frame lenses and finally it's just the overall size of a lens and camera setup you can really easily just chuck it in any backpack and not have to worry about the size when you take it with you what i dislike about the a6600 is the tilting screen i find that super annoying it is helpful in some circumstances but usually a flip out screen is much better and also finally is the 8-bit video recording i think that's something in the new update for the new APS-C camera coming out in 2022 so look out for that so if you're not sure about the differences between between full frame and APS-C size cameras. Let me just quickly break it down for you. The sensor in a full frame camera is one and a half times bigger than an APS-C size sensor. So this is where I get confused because people say you get one and a half times more bokeh, one and a half times more stops of light, and one and a half times the amount of resolution you get. It's definitely true in stops of light you definitely get one and a half more stops of light but in terms of resolution and bokeh i don't really notice a massive difference i think one and a half is a bit too much where you do definitely lose a bit of bokeh and a little bit of resolution but i don't really notice i hope this video was really valuable for you guys whether you're on the fence to buy the a7 IV or the a6600 or whether you're just looking to buy an APS-C or full frame camera i really really appreciate you guys making it this far in the video it really means a lot for me and my channel if you want to help me out even more, hit that like button and make sure you subscribe and check out my other videos. So as always, guys, stay happy, stay healthy, and we will see you next time. Oh, also, I'm going to Bali in like next week. So if you're there, hit me up. I'll be keen to hang out.